Yo, what's poppin' guys, and welcome to a brand new tutorial. Today, I'm gonna run over something very quick and very simple. I'm going to teach you a lot how to change your Scratch project, your .sp3, which is what a Scratch file is called, it's labeled as a .sp3, into a .exe file or an executable file. So then from there, you'll be able to put your projects on places like itch.io where people can download it instead of playing it through an html you could put it on game jolt and if you really wanted to go crazy you could probably realistically put it on steam as well i wouldn't recommend putting a scratch jam on steam but in theory it's possible so let's walk over how to do it step by step so step one is to obviously create a project whatever kind of project you want to create in scratch go ahead and make it and then what you're going to want to do is select it. So I'm just going to use my how to make a FNAF, FNAF game tutorial as an example. Okay, there's multiple ways to do this. One, you can take this link. You can do that. I'm going to do it a different way that I've always done it. So you'll click see inside on your project. Okay, you'll click file over here and then you'll hit save to your computer. And then this will pop up. Here's your little file. You see it says SB3. That's what a Scratch 3.0 project is labeled as. We're going to keep it down here for the time being. We're going to open a new tab. And I'm going to go to this link. It's uh, Turbo Warp uh, has launched a packager where you can package your projects into these .exe files. So go. you can go to that link in the description down below. So I'll walk you through all the stuff that this Turbo Warp packager can do. So the first thing you want to do is if you chose... Uh, project ID or the URL. If you just took the URL, you're going to put it here, right? If you chose file, you're going to click on file. You can either choose the file or what I do is I drag this file right over the choose file button and you'll know that it's there because it will say it right there. Then you're going to click load project and now we decide on choosing any of these optional things. So you can choose to run your project in turbo mode all the time. That's if you want to. Frame rate scratch normally runs at a 31. It normally runs at 30 to 32.3 frames per second. Uh, you can mix that up to, to 60, 120, whatever you want. I'd recommend keeping it at 30 because the more frame rates, especially with the more, uh, excuse me, the more frame rates, especially with the scratch project, the faster it will be because it's obviously putting more things on screen at a time. So keep that in mind as you change your frame rate. The higher the number, the faster your game will seem to run, okay? Next we have interpolation. What does interpolation do? Well, terp interpolation adds frames in between your already existing frames. For example, if you have an animation, right? And it moves from one frame to another, if the frame's choppy, it will try to automatically put its own frames in between those frames to make it look smoother now depending on how smooth your project is already this could make it much better or much worse so keep that in mind you're you might have to test it make sure you definitely test it before you put it out to see if interpolation is right for you next we have high quality pen high quality pen will take any pen you've used in your scratch code right and sometimes depending on the how big or small your pen is so for example let's say you're using stamps okay and you make your stamp size like 35 percent of the sprite and you stamp it it'll be very pixelated by turning on high quality pen it'll make these lines or the pen lines of the stamps or even the normal lines not look pixelated it'll make it look as if it was just a normal vector sprite so i highly recommend doing this there's no reason not to unless you don't use pen. If you don't use pen, there's no reason to have that on. But if you're using pen, like I often do sometimes, I definitely recommend putting your high quality pen on as it's very helpful. Next is infinite clones. For those of you that don't know, Scratch has a 300 clone limit. Once clones reach 300 in Scratch, you will not produce any more until one clone is gotten rid of. By checking infinite clones, you can have as many as you want because we're running an EXE, not through a website, so it makes it a whole lot better. Now, fencing. What is fencing? Fencing is, so take the borders of Scratch. Let's say, let's take this box as an example. Let's say this is the border of your Scratch project, right? Fencing is what stops your, your cat or whatever sprite from going all the way over here off screen. It'll stop it right about here. You'll still see a little bit of it, but it'll still be stuck there. By clicking remove fencing, it can move the sprite what is ever far this way, this way, up, down, left, right. 
in any way it wants as far as it wants to go off screen. I don't I don't see very much use for that unless you're banking off the fact that it goes off screen and then hides or something. That's something to think about depending on what kind of thing you're using. Now, next is the remove miscellaneous limits. Now, what does that do? This does a few things. One, it removes the pitch and pan left and right sound effect, right? Which is depending on which side of the head it's on. You have blocks that set or change your sound effect to volumes. Okay, so let's say you have a block that changes your volume to 100. Normally in Scratch, what it will do is it will stop your entire script for a singular frame, start the change the volume level, and then restart your script for you. It's pretty much not, you, you, you don't really notice it, but it runs a lot nicer with this on when you use blocks like that. It also um, sets your minimum pen size to zero when it's normally one, and your maximum pen size which is normally 1,200 to infinite. It can be as big as you want, your maximum pen size. Next is your stage size. The average scratch stage or the canvas or the window that you'll be playing in is 480 by 360. So by changing this to maybe 1920, 1080, 1280 by 720, right? It will stretch your screen size to that size. Now, this can be bad and it can be good. For example, if you work in uh, Turbo Warp's editor, for example, in Turbo Warp's editor, I have a video about this. I'll link it in the description. You can make your canvas size or your stage size 1280 by 720. You can make it whatever you want and then work with that size. In normal Scratch, you're stuck with the 48360. So when you do this in a normal Scratch project, it'll stretch it to that size. If you use it through a Turbo Warp editor, it'll be just fine. Either way, the stretch won't be super, super noticeable, depending on how drastically large you're making this. And again, if you use uh, vector images, the stretch won't be that big of a deal. If you are using bitmap images, your stretch will be far more noticeable, as the pixels will be va very, way more blatant. So keep that in mind as you do that. So username each hashtag is replaced with a random number. So basically, it's just your username changing you know giving you it's it's not very important <laughs> and finally this autoplay so there won't be a green flag if you tick this you just load up the game and it'll start playing interestingly i highly recommend doing that okay highly recommend putting autoplay on i don't see a real reason not to now you get into the fun stuff okay you have your title so what's it going to say in like let's say you ran the program and in the top corner what's it going to say so we'll just call it so so the name of this project is actually Five Nights at Uglies, if you've watched the series, watched the tutorial series. But the name of the project is Five Nights, uh, How to Make a Five Nights at Freddy's Game Tutorial, but the name of the game I create in the tutorial is Five Nights at Uglies, so I'm going to call it Five Nights at Uglies. Next is your page icon. What is a page icon? Well, let me tell you. A page icon is what you will see in your taskbar. For example, look in your bottom, your top, left, right and see your icons. Maybe you see your Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, well, I guess it's not that anymore, it's Microsoft Edge now, isn't it? OBS, maybe Discord, Spotify, whatever things you have there, that little icon that shows you what you're about to click on is what you are creating here, right? So you can definitely go ahead and create your own one of those, obviously super recommended you do that. So your progress bar is while the game is loading up. When you first open your project, you can choose to show a little progress bar if you want to. I recommend it. It's just a nice little look thing. And then you can say what it says while it's loading. For example, you say, you can say like, for my game, meshing the ugliness. Perfect. And then a loading screen image. If you leave it blank, it will just be a black square. I'm going to leave it blank since I, I didn't create any art for it. I'm also going to leave this blank since I haven't created any art for this tutorial. I'm just telling you, you should obviously now here's some things you can show you can show your green flag your stop sign and your full screen button i don't recommend showing any of them i recommend in your project setting up a system for when you would normally have to re-click the green flag setting up a different system to reload from the start i always do that i highly recommend you do it too because showing that green flag in the top i never like it i think it's kind of annoying when you're playing it on a separate project so definitely keep that off now these colors now we have to cover what these colors are. So basically, what these colors are 
are uh how do i explain it so uh, basically you know your background colors for whatever like let's say your project size is your 480 by 360 right whatever the background color is of the like if you went to full screen your 40 by 360 would not cover your entirety of your screen you'd have some black bars on the side this will change that color your foreground color progress bars icons text you know white and then your accent colors you know controls prompts context menus these ones tell you what they are but i'd recommend keeping them the same if you want to mess around with it and see what they end up looking like you definitely can there's obviously nothing wrong with that now this is what i really like i really like these parts the cursors so you can choose to have a normal cursor which is just this right your normal mouse uh, no cursor just shuts it off so you can't even see your mouse I don't see many circumstances where you'd want to do that I'm sure there are uh, and then a custom cursor where you can upload a file again 32 by 32 works best larger's won't work I just well they will work it's just might look a little bit funky so 32 by 32 pixels PX create your own cursor make sure the background is transparent all you need to do to do that is make sure there's like a specific color for it right and then make sure you save it as a png jpegs will not have transparent backgrounds pngs will so then you can put it in there and it'll give you a own, your own little custom cursor to move around and it'll hide your normal one and just show the custom one i'm gonna keep it as normal you can lock lock your mouse cursor i wouldn't do that right now since again experimental experiments are kind of eh. and then usb bluetooth game pads or controllers again that's considering you actually coded that into your game if you haven't, no reason to turn this on. If you have, you can definitely try it. Just make sure there's a way to toggle it in your game. Because, again, you, you get it. Now, your advanced options, probably don't want to change these. But if you want to take a look at them, I honestly couldn't tell you what these are. I definitely wouldn't touch them. I'd keep them the same that they are. Enable compiler on, warp timer off. If you want to mess around and see what they do, definitely go right ahead. Again, I do not know what they do, so I wouldn't touch it. So now... Here's what we're packaging it into. A plain HTML is you're going to get like a Chrome file or an Edge file, and you can put that into, say, Itch.io, and then you can play that game in your browser, okay? This nw.js was the old way of creating an exe. You had to download this weird program, and it was kind of awkward and felt really unsafe to do it almost. Like, you really felt like you were going to get a virus doing it. If you want to do that, since this, if you want to do an exe that isn't experimental, you're going to want to do, if you're on Windows, do nw.js32 or 64. You don't want to force a 64 since some PCs will be really weird with that. So definitely just choose that. If you want to do experimental, I don't see a real problem with it. I tested it. I didn't see much. You're just going to want to do, if you're Windows, Electronics, Executable, or Linux, Electron, applica Linux, right? Oh, yeah, again, if you're mac or linux don't forget those i'm windows though so i'm going to keep that i'm going to select electron windows executable okay again this these executables electrons will eventually place the nwds because per, performance file size and security you get it what's the package name going to be called i'll change it again to five nights whoop nights at uglies perfect and then finally you can do further steps for windows to change an executable icon create an installer program download and run practice extras and select output on the website i don't touch it i wouldn't recommend touching it if you want to touch it with it mess around definitely go ahead and then once you're done setting up all of this stuff that we've set up you're going to click on this package button and then it's going to start loading your script loading your electrons compressing and then it'll automatically download if it doesn't click on this right here and it'll download it straight from here you can download as many times as you want and you're going to get a file then you're going to come and find wherever that project downloaded in your file explorer wherever that might be i just put it in a in a little folder just because it's a lot cleaner than showing on like a downloads tab right so basically what you're going to do is yours might may or may not look like this little icon right here this is a uh, winrar icon if you don't have winrar downloaded that doesn't matter you'll just see this as like a compressed zip folder it works just the same you're going to right click on it you can't actually see what i'm right clicking on but you're going to right click it and then you're going to see an extract here you're going to click on extract here in the drop down menu and it's going to start loading up another tab and then once it's done 
you will see you have this new folder that is not zipped or is no longer a WinRAR file or there's nothing else like that. You're going to double click on it and you're going to see all this stuff. The one that is the one that you're going to want to run is just under the type of application. It'll end in .exe if you choose to have that on. It probably won't for most computers since I have the I turned on the whatever the last letters are. But it'll say the name of your project that you designed, right? When you hover over it, your file description will be Electron. It'll give you your size, for example. Again, you can't see this just because I'm capturing a window and not my entire screen. But you'll double click on it, and again, this will be your icon. Automatically, an Electron looks like that. But you know, you double click on it. Well, I should, I should probably show it. So one second while I load up another thing so I can show it to you. Okay, so we'll double click on the file. It'll load it up, meshing the ugliness, just like we set it up to say. And then you'll get this little kind of thing, right? You'll load it up. And again, that 1280 by 720, you see how much it messed with it. You see how gross that looks. That doesn't look good. Again, recommended, unless you're working in the thing, to change it to your 480 by 360. I fairly sure i'm fairly certain those are the numbers if they're not excuse me hit on package again get our new file i will load it up we get the new project here right click extract here it does this little, little process right here double click on this five nights of freddy's thing or whatever it's called for you and then go ahead and double click your project and then it loads up meshing the ugly so you can hit on full screen right here and here's this black bar as i talked about and then bam here's your project everything works super nice the way it's intended i don't have sounds on so don't worry about that if you're game well yeah we do there it is look at that everything works just as your normal scratch project would and now you have your executable file and then from there you can put it on any place you'd want to doesn't matter see because of this interpolation Look at how smooth this looks. This looks so smooth. It looks so nice. I love this. This looks perfect. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, then like it. If you didn't like it, like it anyways. I know I said it was going to be quick. It was 17 minutes so far. I just want to end this as fast as I can. I was really expecting this to be a lot faster, but I guess I went into too much detail talking about it. So I'm sorry about that. While you're at it, why not subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content. That would help me out a lot. Join Discord. Link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.